All right, so we're checking out the Emacs Babyhawk 03. So this is the uh, updated version of the Babyhawk 2 HD, uh, the one that I reviewed a while back. I'll link the old video in the description if you want to get details on this one. I believe they're still selling this one as well. Uh, Analog and uh, Vista, I guess they're calling it the Runcam link now. And now we have the version with the DJI 03 system in it. Um, the frame is essentially the same. I'll point out all the little differences, but the um, thing that's di different about the frame is the manufacturer of the frame. So Emacs did go with a different vendor for the frame, so it's different from the old version. They, uh, I guess it's basically the same frame, um, but they made it a little bit more robust. It's a little bit stronger carbon. And so, yeah, this is um, a little bit improved compared to uh, the old version. But yeah, the um, Babyhawk 2 and the analog and the HD version was a, this was a really popular frame, a really popular bind and fly. A lot of people bought this. It's, it's, it's got a good combination of, uh, it's kind of, you know, very versatile. It's, um, you know, a good combination of uh, very long flight times, uh, good performance uh, in terms of flight, uh, both either cruising around or doing a little bit of acro. It, was, you know, it could do a lot of things, uh, but one of the limitations of this um, particular setup here is that if you wanted to get the HD version and then also put like maybe a naked GoPro on here, you're going to be over the 250 gram limit unless you're using a really tiny forest battery. And so that was a one of the complaints about um, the uh, Babyhawk 2 HD uh, when you wanted to get GoPro footage. But with the new version with the DJI 03 system, you don't need to carry GoPro. And with a fairly large uh, 850 milliamp hour forest lipo, which is which is the size is recommended, you can get very long flight times and get good quality 4K video without having to carry a GoPro. And be under 250 grams so that is a really huge benefit of this uh, new version here you know, so basically good 4k footage good performance excellent flight times and you don't have to um, go over 250 grams so for those of you that don't want to register the drone don't have to uh, get a remote id module and all that with the battery under 250 grams 4k footage you know, and uh, excellent flight times. This is a all around, I think, uh, I think this is going to be really popular because it's, it's, it, it kind of ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. And mainly for those of you that want to be compliant and follow the FAA rules, but you know, you still want to be able to get good footage and, and, and uh, good flight times. This is the way to go. And I think this is going to be a really popular model. So just kind of comparing how the new version, the old version here uh, looks, the 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 Vista Air unit here is on the back, um, uh, kind of mounted to the top plate, and they had to you know this, basically the same top plate here. So they made a modification and added this extra mounting plate. It's kind of hard to see here. Let's see if I can get the props out of here. So yeah, this mounting plate that mounts the O3 Air unit uh, to get that in. That's this sort of a uh, adaptation. It does get the Air O3 Air unit a little bit more centered for good weight distribution and it's kind of close to the flight controller. Uh, you know, this is a pretty robust frame. So it's uh, like a little over two millimeter thick top plate and the bottom plate is four millimeters thick and you have this sort of setup with the arm bracing. You know, it's gonna hold up pretty well on a crash. Um, the electronics are the same. It's the same um, 25 by 25 F411 all-in-one flight controller board. So it's like, I think it's 25 amp ESCs and an F411 flight controller. Same motors. Uh, these are these Eco uh, 1404 motors, I believe. And they come in at 3700 kV, the same as before. And you got the same three-bladed uh, Avon props. We've got a few uh, different things here, like these 3D prints. So they have a little protector here for the XD30, and that is not on the um, the old version. My came with an Express LRS receiver, which is right there, and they made a custom 3D printed part for that that holds it in place. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but that's there's a little 3D printed part here that's holding the receiver in place. Uh, and you've got a bunch of zip ties here holding everything together as well. The um, camera cable. You have the Express LRS receiver antenna being held on top of the carbon plate here. 
and this is an, actually an issue. So you can see from this perspective here, if you're flying away from yourself, these parts of the antenna are going to be blocked uh, by this carbon plate. And so I've actually had fail safes uh, about 500 meters away on this one, and uh, that's not good. This is not where it should be installed. I think it should be pretty easy to fix this problem. Uh, I'm going to how hopefully maybe in the second batch of these are released to customers they'll fix it what they should do is don't don't zip tie it to the top of the plate here um, what you can do is just take these standoff screws out these four one two three and four move the camera out of the way cut off these zip ties and then we want to move the antenna in front of the carbon plate here and so you want to try and mount it so the antenna is underneath here under this plastic piece here and not being blocked by any of the carbon and then when you're flying away from yourself the antenna is going to have a clear path to your transmitter so it should be mounted here so what they ought to do is modify this 3d print so they can mount the antenna here and then have it you know come out of this little hole and then run the cable back it should be pretty easy to do i'm not sure if this antenna cable is long enough it's a really short one it's like it starts right there you know, the antenna cable starts right here and it's kind of short so I'm not sure if it's going to stretch out that far um, may need to use a different antenna but that's where the antenna should go so if you get this if you happen to have this problem and you're, you're having some range issues you're going to have to move or move the placement of the antenna to a better place and like I said right over here in the front is the probably the most ideal location for the uh, transmitter or the uh, receiver antenna so again, of course, you've got a custom 3D print here for the O3 Air Unit camera. Uh, this is totally different from the old cameras where you know, the cameras are kind of sitting back like this. And um, the uh, I put this uh, camera butter UV filter over on here. Uh, this is basically like a lens protector. And you definitely want to do that. I mean, it is fairly exposed. There is protection here in the front, you know, when you're flying. But the, you know... They, they, they didn't they didn't put any side protection here because mainly uh, they want to um, not have anything in the field of view it's a very wide angled camera it's like 150 degrees so that's why there's nothing there so you want to protect that lens and get pick up one of these um, camera butter UV filters um, it's well worth the investment because if you break the lens on this we have to replace the whole camera housing which is a uh, hundred dollars so Better to break one of these $5 UV filters versus having to spend $100 on the camera. So I highly recommend that. I'll link this down in the video description. And then you have another uh, 3D printed part here for the uh, O3 air unit antenna. It's back here. That's also a little bit different. And it does come in and out. You can, it does come uh, basically not installed from the factory. It's kind of laying sideways. So if you want to put this in a box or something and not have the antenna in the way, you can collapse it down by just pulling it out and then just put it tucking it under the battery strap. XT30 for the battery connection just as before. And then this is a shorter battery strap now. Before the battery strap was super long. Now it's a little bit on the short side. So the Velcro doesn't quite go all the way for this 850. It does for the 650. So comparing the two versions here, the old version, this is the one with the Vista. And now that, that one's coming in at 141 grams. Uh, now with the new version with the O3 system, we're coming in at 158 grams. So a little bit of a weight increase. Of course, the O3 area is a little bit heavier, plus all the extra 3D printed parts. And also, I think the uh, UV filter is like about a gram. But then also comparing the battery weights, so the 850, I'm sorry, the 650, is coming in at 69.8 grams and then the 850 is coming in at 87 grams 86.9 so just to prove to you that it is under 250 because someone's going to probably say there's no way this is under 250, 250 grams with the 850 altogether now we're coming in at 244.3 grams clearly show that here there you go 244.3 so under 250 grams and then with the 650 uh, we're coming at 227 so the reason I went with two different batteries for my testing is the 850 is the recommended one and that's what the PID tunes for and it flies 
actually really well out of the box. Um, I think that if you want a little bit better accurate performance, go with a lighter 650. It's going to feel a little snappier. It is, you know, roughly 20 some grams difference. And that does make a difference on something this small. Um, it's not a huge difference. And actually, uh, in terms of looking at the video footage, the flight footage, you can't tell. If I showed you both, you wouldn't be able to tell any difference. You can only feel it on the sticks when you're flying it. So, um, yeah. It just you know these are the two batteries i'll list down in the video description basically kind of you know you, you're gonna get a shorter flight time on the 650 the 850 you can get probably up to eight minutes of flight time on this one if you're just kind of cruising around uh and uh, more aggressive flying on this 850 is going to be less of course probably like five minutes and then on the 650 probably like six minutes cruising around but if you're flying as aggressively which you probably want to on this lighter battery uh you're looking at about a three and a half to four minute flight on this one yeah, so overall, I'm really happy with this particular model. I think it checks a lot of boxes, at least for me. No need to uh, register it, no remote ID module needed. Uh, you get really good 4K footage out of this. No need to carry a naked GoPro, and it's under, under 250 grams, so it flies you know, really nicely and you get long flight times. So overall, I think it's going to be a really popular model. It's, I think it's going to be really good for a lot of people anyway that's my thoughts on this one here if you enjoyed the video uh, please hit the thumbs up button it really helps out the channel and uh, if you want more videos like this consider subscribing that'll do it for this video if you have any questions let me know talk to you guys in the next one